Welcome to another edition of the Sim Racing Garage. I'm Barry Rowland. In this episode, I will be converting my longtime go to pedal set, the Wave Italy Impetus, from the standard floor mount Monza configuration to the GT styled top mount Emola configuration, also available from the guys at Wave Italy. It's been way too long since I was able to have my pedals in this traditional setup, and I'm looking forward to seeing if there's any difference to the impetus pedals feel when mounted this way. So, let's get to it. So this is what we call the Monza assembly or configuration for the impetus pedals from Wave Italy. And I've been running these for well over a year. Uh, I've been, actually, I put a lot of hours on these. These are my main pedal set. And yeah, it's it's been serving me well. I really don't have any problems with it in this configuration, but of course, because they have the GT hanging bracket set up, I want to give it a go. So they sent me the equipment to make that conversion. And of course, that's what this video is about. Now, first off, this is kind of an all-inclusive frame. So all these plates have to be bolted together to make this, this unit whole. All right, I'll turn it sideways here. And I've got some wires I want to make sure I don't lay this down on. So what that means is we got a side bracket here. We have one on the other side but we also have a main plate here that these pedals are sitting on. And we have some other plates that go underneath here to help support that plate and also attach it to these side plates. So it's all kind of intertwined together. And what I'm gonna do is to make this uh, go as quickly as I can, I'm just going to disassemble it and then come back and show you guys the individual parts. And of course, the main piece right here that the pedals themselves are mounted to. So I'm just going to pull this apart and when we come back, we'll just kind of have it laying around and I'll, I'll describe each part to you. Now I've removed all the parts of the assembly and of course it's very simple stuff here. It's, there's the heel tray and yeah, it's just a or heel support, whatever you want to call it. And it has a little slot in it and a hole obviously for mounting and then adjusting our angle. This is the multi-angle side plate. You can see it's got lots of holes in it for adjusting the angle and attaching everything else. And we have two more pieces here on each side. And that was that L bracket I was telling you about that goes on the edge of this assembly here. And that kind of lets you have two holes in this direction on the side here to mount to other things. So we mount these holes to the bottom of this plate. Now, speaking of the plate, this is a quarter inch thick plate or about six mil. I think it's six mils, maybe seven mil. Anyway, it's a thick aluminum plate on here. And if you watch the original review, I think I showed this, guy, this to you guys. And on the bottom, I've done my cable management. As you can see, I've got some zip ties just to keep the cables up against here. Now, when you have this in one of these uh, systems here, you have this thing all put together. This is not touching anything. It's kind of floating in the air. So that's why you see why, <laughs> why you see rather all these cables on the bottom because they're not sitting on anything like they are right at the moment. But these are good cables here. If I set them down gently, I'm not worried about them too much. Now. Here's the problem. We're going to make this into a hanging set, right? So that means I can't just flip them over because then the throttle is going to be over here and clutch will be over there. And obviously that's not going to work. So I'm going to have to detach every single pedal here and then flip the actual plate around so that I can mount them the way I need to. Or actually what I'm really going to be doing is just kind of taking each pedal and just flipping it upside down. And the, this plate is going to maintain its position right here. So it's not going to be flipping the plate anywhere. It's going to stay there. I'm just going to take the throttle off. And if you will, just kind of turn it 180 degrees and attach it on the bottom here. That means I'm going to have to take my cable management all apart and redo it all. But you know, it's not that big of a deal. And so yeah, <laughs> when we come back, I'm going to have the plate, I'm going, to, I'm going to have the pedals rather configured, switched around so that we can start building the other assembly, which is the Emola. They call that the Emola assembly when it's a hanging GT style. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and pull these off, flip everything around, and we'll see how that looks when I get back. So we're back with the pedals inverted now, and you can see they're in the proper orientation. My throttle pedal is over here on my right if I'm sitting in front of them. And of course, my clutch is over here on the left with the brake in the middle. And it was just, again, a matter of just taking the pedals and flipping them around and getting them on to the plate underneath. So yeah, it wasn't a big deal. It, it just for a little is a little bit fiddly because obviously I had all this. I got my cable management over here now. I can see some zip ties holding everything out of the way, and I still have some leeway for adjusting my brake pedal back and forth if I want to. 
for heel and toe or if I'm doing left foot braking. I also had to flip around the faces for the pedals and the clutch and the brake pedals here, they have a little insert behind them that you also see a little aluminum piece right there. And you have to flip that around too to match the curvature of these pedal faces, which I have really grown to, to like a lot as far as these two pedals here. And the, the throttle actually has some curvature in it too. Not a whole lot, but it works great for heel and toe with that shape. For me anyway, of course, a lot of this is subjective. So yeah, we've got this thing set up now for our GT configuration or attitude. And what we'll do now is go ahead and I'm going to pull all the metal bits and plates that we're going to be using to convert this from the flat mounted or straight up and down mounted Monza into our hanging Amola pedal set. So let's take a look at the parts for the frame that we're going to be building to make this GT pedal mount happen. First off, I'm going to show you the bottom plates here. And these are the main bottom plates, obviously. We have a flange here that we have holes in so we can mount this to our rig, right? And these are six mil holes. Everything's six mil in here. In fact, they give you a whole bag of black six mil bolts. And these are all button heads and some nuts with the nylock in them and some washers. So we can assemble everything. And all of these screws are the same as far as the length goes. So that apparently all of these metal pieces being the same thickness, they know what you need. So this looks to be about a 15 millimeter M6 button head. There you go. So we give, it looks like there's plenty in here. We'll find out once we get it obviously built. I like that they went with the black instead of the silver. The Emolas that I have here, or the Monzas rather, all came, uh, rather came with a bunch of the silver hardware which I kind of like the black going with the black, but you know, it's all aesthetics anyway. So, so this is going to sit up like this, right? And we're going to have another piece over here on the other side. So they're going to look like this, right? Then we have a bar that's going to attach them right here. And this is a steel bar and it's been tapped on both ends with M6 threads right in there. Of course, on this side over here, and you can actually do something with the channel here. I'm not sure exactly what size T-nut this is. I'll see if I can figure that out. But it's not meant to do that. All it's meant to do is connect these two side plates via these holes here, these two here, from the other side, like this, right? And we'll have the other plate on this side. And that'll be the bottom frame. Plus, we have, it's going to be stiff down here too because we have this pedal tray, or not pedal tray, but heel tray, and it goes like this. This is where the pedals would be at. So this ledge goes towards the front. And you can see we have ample adjustment room here. We've got three holes and three slots. So that gives us about three and a half inches of forward and backwards play on the bottom part here that this is going to be going in. All right. So if this is sitting here like this, you can do it like this. Like this. All right. It can move back and forth. The pedal tray can. So that's good. It looks like it's got a plenty of adjustments here. You can see all the holes in this stuff. And we also have these plates here. And this is going to go like this. All right, the three holes on the bottom of this plate here, you see them running around the bottom there, are going to go in these holes. And you can see that there is a slot here. All right, we've got holes for the screws. And that's to adjust the angle of this top assembly that's going to be sitting in there. All right. But then on the top assembly itself, we're going to be able to adjust the height of our pedals. These guys here will be able to raise and lower based on which holes we have selected here. And we're going to be attaching them the same way we attach to the other plate. We're going to be using these L brackets here and they're just going to sit on here like this. And these are my old ones. That's why they're kind of chipped up. Um, I'm not sure if a kit comes with them or not, but mine didn't. So I'm just going to use the old ones, which is fine. You, you're not going to see them anyway. So they just sit on there like that. And those are the two holes we're going to use right here. They're going to fit right up against this. Like that on the inside. So that gives us our height adjustment. So we can take this thing, put it over here so you can see it, and we can lower it and raise it. And that's a pretty good length there, as you can see. We've got some good adjustability. I'd say that's at least six inches there. 
And of course, it depends on how the pedals themselves are presented to our feet, where we're going to end up with this. But the whole thing is, there's the idea here is that there's a lot of adjustability in this. And just having these metal plates on both sides with these rather heavy pedals hanging in there, I'm, I'm curious to see just how it handles it <laughs> and see if there's any flex. But, you know, with all this bolted together, and of course, as it comes, like I said on the other unit when I started the review or this video, that all this comes together as an integral one-piece unit once everything's bolted together. And it is pretty solid. Uh, when I had it in the MOLA configuration just sitting on the floor, it was a very solid unit then. So I got a feeling it's going to be solid too. And of course, how high we mount the pedals is going to have some effect on just how rigid that is. But what I'm going to do now is go ahead and get this thing assembled. And we come back, we'll see what it looks like. As you can see, I have the whole assembly together now. And it's, it's a very large assembly. <laughs> it's, when I, put, I didn't realize how large this was going to be once I started putting it together. But the total height on this, and it can... Uh, you know, it can vary a little bit, but the very top edge up here is 510 millimeters high, and that's measuring off the flange here. It's also 460 millimeters long on the flanges, right? So it's a big assembly. It's not much wider. In fact, it's not any wider than my other assembly. Put this up here. And the only thing that I ran into here was you have to pay attention Remember when I said in the last segment when I showed the screws that they were all the same length, looked like 15 mil. Well, I was wrong. Four of them, just four, <laughs> are like 20 mil long. And the reason that is is because they have to go into these top parts, right? These little L brackets that are holding this quarter inch aluminum plate here. And they have to be longer or thicker to make it all the way through there and still get your nylock nut on at the right depth once you tighten everything up. So there's four of those in there. And I figured that out once I was putting it together. So other than that, though, they're all the same length, so no problems there. Another thing, on the inside here, I don't know how well you guys are going to see this, my clutch pedal, right in here. Obviously, there's three. Let me show you these. Remember these three screws here that go here, that are mounting this plate on the bottom part. And, of course, we have two up here that are holding our pedals. But this one here, and, of course, they're all button heads, nice and pretty on the outside. But this one, because the button head was on this side and the nut was on the inside, where I wanted my, my clutch pedal to be was too close to this and it was hitting it, right? And I didn't want to, I could have slid the pedal over some more, but I, I wanted it where it was. So what I did was simply just flip it around, put the button head on the inside here. Again, I don't know how well you guys are going to see the clearance issue we had there. Okay, the bolt's right there where my finger is right here. And yeah, the face here was scraping it just a little bit, right? But then in, when you're using these and you're racing, yeah, it's, it's going to be worse than that. It's going to be really hitting it. But now, yeah, no problems. Perfect. All right. And yeah, I think that was about the only thing. Plus, you, it's good to have another set of hands when you're doing this because, yeah, uh, once you have this system built and then you have to put the pedals in, it's kind of uh, precarious. <laughs> I guess this is a good word that you're trying to put the bolts into to catch these L brackets while you're holding it and then keeping these together and because everything's got to be kind of loose. You can't have it real tight or it won't fit in there. And yeah, it's just one of those. It's a little bit of a dance if you're doing it by yourself. I actually put it down on the floor and lowered it in with one hand because there's a grip in here I could, gri I could get it with and then kind of use my legs to keep these steady while I put the bolts in. Well, it's anyway, we got it done. It's the important thing. <laughs> but yeah, it's very sturdy. Uh, as you might imagine, like I said before, let's just let this spin with the whole mat here. As I said before, all of these pieces alone aren't much. that You can feel them kind of being bendy or whatever. But once we get all of these bolts and screws that, that make up this assembly cinched down tight with proper torque on them, it really becomes stiff. I mean, this is, it's just, I don't feel it, any kind of bending or anything. You might see some movement just, just because it's, the mat's moving, but yeah. It feels very good to the hand, and, and we'll know for sure once I get in there and I'm actually putting my feet on it and slapping them, which I've already kind of test fit it, and this looks to be about where I want mine to be, including the heel tray. Everything is lining up like it should. Yeah, everything's feeling pretty stiff here. But again, this is a monstrosity of an assembly, and you have to take that into account if you want to get the Wave Italy uh, GT hanging pedals. 
So what we'll do now is go over to the rig and I'm going to set it on my sliding pedal tray that I have and see how lucky I get as far as these holes on the flanges. You know, we got these three holes here. Now I know I'm not going to catch all three because my, my pedal tray just isn't long enough. Now I could go back and change it when I may, if I settle on this and I land on this and this is what I want to use all the time, then I might just get a longer piece of profile so it'll catch all three of them. But I think two six mils tightened down in my tray and the tray tightened down too, uh, I don't think it's going to be an issue. I think it's going to be fine. It won't slip any, but obviously there's only one way to find out. So overall, I'm happy the way this went together. It looked a lot more complicated than it turned out to be. And yeah, once I've, I got everything dialed in, which I, I kind of knew where I wanted these pedals to be as far as the angle and how high they were. So I got a little lucky on that too, but that's just because I've done this so much. I kind of know where my feet are and where they need to be. So yeah, everything looks good. The powder coat looks good on this. It's a good looking set. I mean, just it's a good looking presentation. I don't know what you guys think, but I'll just kind of roll it around here so you can see it. We can't see the, the red as much as we did, obviously, when it was sitting on the other way on the Monza configuration, as they call it. And this is, again, the Amola configuration. But, you know, you can still see the red in there. <laughs> so, yeah, now all we have to do is go over to the rig oops, and get it mounted and see what it looks like. All right, I wanted to show you guys what I did here with my pedal faces. Face, not faces, because I only did it to one. Now, this is the brake pedal face. And of course the clutch pedal face was the exact same size as this. Now, this project that we're doing here, this GT mod, if you will, which is really just getting the Amola uh, set up from Wave Italy on their pedals. This is, I've been meaning to do this for a while and that is reduce the width of the clutch pedal. Now, I always felt that it was w way wider than it needed to be. And I understand why Wave Italy had it that way, the exact same size as the brake pedal because aesthetically it looked good. It had a good flow when somebody's looking at your pedal set. And yeah, but there just wasn't a whole lot of um, room in between the clutch pedal and the brake pedal faces because they were so wide. Now I like a wide face on my brake pedal, I really do. And I'm not gonna change that, never would, because I like this. But for the clutch pedal, it just was, it was just a little bit too wide for what we really needed. So anyway, this project uh, just motivated me more to do it now. And I've been meaning to do this actually, to make this narrower because it didn't need it that big. And what I did obviously took some metal off and I got the pieces here and I just took it over to my bandsaw. And yeah, you can do this on a regular bandsaw with a regular bandsaw blade. Uh, and yeah, because this is non-ferrous metal, this aluminum. And so I just took these pieces off. They're about 15 millimeters each in width. And of course, minus the metal that the kerf got chewed away to make the cut which is, I believe, about two, two and a half millimeters, the way the staggered blades are cut. So that means this one here is 80, I believe it was 80, yeah, 80 millimeters wide. Pretty wide, right? Especially for just a clutch pedal. So now I have it at, I believe it's 46. I think after every, everything's said and done, it's about 47 millimeters. So another one and a half millimeters for the curve of the blade, and that gives us 80 here, right? If I put these two pieces back on. So the, the math works at least. So that leaves me again with a 47 millimeter uh, clutch pedal. And I'm gonna be driving with, before I cut this, I, I did a driving session so I could show you guys the differences of me using this as a clutch pedal face and using the fat one as a, a pedal face. And I'm actually gonna be able to move the brake over a little bit too for left foot braking, which I wasn't able to before because of the face. And because we're working again within this confined restricted space, now that we have the GT housing on both sides of our pedals, yeah, this is going to make it work much better. And again, you know, I've been meaning to do this anyway, but this just obviously at this point, I figured, you know, I'm, I like the GT pedal set enough that it motivated me to go ahead and get the bandsaw out and then the files and everything. And because I finished it off pretty good, obviously you guys know how I do things here. I don't like doing them, you know, the, 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 the quick way. I, I want to make sure that's done right. But anyway, I'm going to show you guys again, video of me using this as the clutch pedal face and this as the clutch pedal face. And yeah, we'll see if there's any difference. I'm sure I won't have any trouble finding the clutch pedal because again, we're just kind of stabbing at the pedal when we're doing heel and toe. But yeah, we'll, I'll talk more about that in the driving segment itself. So the pedals are mounted now, as you can see on my pedal tray. And I was right, this, is, this side here piece is a bit long for my side profile piece that I use to mount pedals to. And you can see that I don't have a bolt pack here in the back. But I do have some M6s here in the front and in the middle. 
and also on the same side. It matched up perfectly with the width of this, which I totally was not expecting. Got lucky there. I usually don't get lucky. So it's very stiff. I've been driving it, and I really don't know if I really need that other bolt in there. But I know the perfectionist me will probably cut another piece of profile just so I can grab that because I'll probably be using these pedals. Again, because they were my go-to pedals before, I don't see them changing that just because I have them hang them upside down, hanging upside down rather. So anyway, so yeah, fit in good. Um, I'm going to go around the front here. And you can see that there's a little difference here in our pedal configuration on the pedal faces. You can see the clutch pedal has now been reduced in size, something I've been meaning to do for a very long time with this pedal set. But yeah, because of the confined or tight spaces in here with this structure that allows us to mount this in a GT position, I decided to go ahead and do it. It really motivated me to go ahead and, and get it done. I have a segment on that in this video. I think it's called something about modding the clutch pedal face or something. But anyway, check that out there. And I'll probably talk a little bit about, of it, about it in the driving segment. And we'll go around the side here. Same thing here. We have the front M6 here and the middle M6 and the other one's kind of hanging off the back. But again, I don't notice anything detrimental as far as so far what I've been doing with it. Now there is some flex on the lateral plane here because this, obviously, this system here was not built to be pushed laterally. <laughs> so I can actually pull on it. And of course I'm pulling at the top here. It, it's a pretty long lever down there to the bolt or down to the bottom there, but you can see it moves a little bit. All right. But when I push it this way, yeah, it's not moving. I'm pushing it towards the longitudinal axis, which is how this bracket system was designed, because obviously that's how we're pushing our pedals. Another big plus here is now that they're, they're hanging upside down, it's very easy to get to my screws here. And I can adjust where the brake pedal is, or the clutch pedal, and of course, or the accelerator pedal over here, throttle. So yeah, I like that part of it. That's real easy to get to those now, which before it was not. <laughs> you have to get up from underneath it. So, so far I'm very pleased and I'm going to get in, obviously, and we're going to do some driving. I'm going to do some heel and toe shifting because that's where your feet are flying around doing the dance as it were. And yeah, that'll tell you if you have enough room to make things happen. I'm going to wear my wider regular shoes instead of my racing shoes just to see because I know a lot of guys uh, run their, their pedals when they're using their pedals. They use those kind of shoes, not real racing shoes, which are thinner and made for smaller pedal faces and spaces where their pedals are. But anyway... We'll see how all that hashes out in the driving segment. So here we are on iRacing in the Lotus 79, and we're at Sebring, of course. And I'm going to be running the same segment here of track, so you guys can see if there's any differences in what I'm talking about. Here I have the regular size clutch uh, pedal face on, and everything is, is just like it is when I've, as I've been using these pedals for the past year or so. So, but see, my feet are used to this. Uh, they're used to the spacing of the pedals. So. The only thing different is now I have the barriers because of the hanging configuration brackets that we're using here. And I didn't notice anything at first. Everything seemed to be just doing like it normally does, even though I'm in tighter space of shifting. What did I did notice rather is that my right foot, the throttle foot, every once in a while it would scrape on the bracket over there with the rubber. Now, of course, these are wide shoes. These are Vans. So they're a lot wider shoes than regular racing shoes. And if I'm really racing, I use racing shoes. And we'll see that uh, further into this segment. So no real surprises here for me. Everything kind of felt the same, except the way the pedals are presented. Now that did make a difference in the feel. And we're going to switch over here in a second to the new clutch pedal face that I cut down that you saw in an earlier segment. And again, no big change on what the feel is here um, for my clutch foot, because I'm just stabbing away at the clutch pedal anyway at this point when you're, when you're dancing like this and running hard. You really can't, uh, you're not distinguishing much with that clutch. You're just punching it and trying to get the shift through. All right, so yeah, in the GT configuration like this, it does feel different when you use the pedals. Now, is it better than having the pedals sitting flat, uh, pointing straight up in what uh, Wave Italy calls the Monza position or this Emola position where they're in the GT style hanging down? Well, that's totally subjective. <laughs> you know, it's totally up to you what you would like best. Uh, of course, aesthetics might even matter to people when they're building their sim rigs. So they might want the GT pedal position. So I was not any faster or slower. I was about the same on, on the lapse time. So nothing really changed as far as that goes. But I personally, and this is just a personal observation on, from me, I do like the GT hanging style. It's just the way 
when you're pressing down on the pedals. And here we are again, the same section of track, but now I'm using my racing shoes, which I use when I'm actually racing. And yeah, here I'm not making contact with anything. Uh, the throttle pedal uh, with the foot, because it's the narrow racing shoes, of course, I'm not hitting anything, everything's clean. And yeah, so no real difference for me on the pedals as far as having the brackets there or not having the brackets there. But again, I, I want to stress again, I'm a nine and a half foot size. So somebody that's a, you know, a 12 or 11 or something, it might be a totally different story for you uh, trying to use the pedals in, in such a small space here uh, with this GT position. It's not that small, but just saying. So anyway, in the GT hanging position here, um, it just feels, I'm not, it's more natural to me, I guess. I don't know. Uh, it's just because we always, you know, the, the cars we spend most of our time in and most of our lives, if you had a shifter, were like this. Uh, this is the way they're configured. And your feet just feel like they're at home with the way the pedals are presented. And when you're pressing them, the pressing action is a little different than pressing on a straight up one where it just kind of falls over towards the back. Now it's it's doing the same thing, but it's actually swinging up a little bit as you're pushing it. Not really swinging up, I guess that's a bad word, but it's just not falling over backwards like it does when you have them flipped around the other way. So there is a definite different feel here. Whether or not it's good or bad, or you like it or you don't like it, it's gonna, again, be totally subjective between different drivers. But I think I am going to keep this like this because, and I'm not gonna lie to you, I like the aesthetic part of it too. But yeah, the feel of it is just as good as uh, having it the other way around. I'm just as fast. It's not doing anything for me either way, I don't feel, but it definitely feels better to me. And maybe it's just because it's new. You know, you gotta count that in too. When you get a new position or a new set of pedals, you also have to count things like that into the equation. But anyway, yeah, overall, I'm, I'm real happy to have the GT uh, set up like this. And again, I've been meaning to get my clutch pedal uh, cut down for a long time. So when I'm doing just left foot braking car, I can move my brake further over now than I could before. And yeah, so it's all working out pretty well here. And yeah, so we'll just get to the next segment.
final thoughts on converting my Wave Italy impetus pedal set from the floor mount Monza setup to the Amola GT style hanging setup. It's been a long time since I had a pedal set in the GT configuration. The last time was back in 2015 when I did my review on the MPPC GT pedals and I had forgotten how it feels to be racing with a set in that configuration. Now with this Emola setup from Wave Italy, I'm back. <laughs> As some of you may know, my current personal go-to pedal set is the Wave Italy Impetus you see here. I've been running them for over two years now in the original what Wave Italy calls the Monza setup, which is the only way you could get them at that time. Now they have the Emola option if you buy the Impetus pedal set from them. It does cost a bit more, and I think it's easy to see why with all the extra brackets that are required to make this happen. All the metal parts in this kit are nicely finished in a smooth black matte finish. They went together with no dramas, and all the fasteners were present. You will notice that the pedals are close to the bracket sides. I measured the width of the space and it was 345 millimeters or 13 and 5 8 inches. If you have large feet, this may be an issue for you. I have a 9.5 foot size and was able to navigate the pedal faces with an occasional brush with the right side bracket. This with regular size shoes on. Now, once I put my driving shoes on, I had no issues at all with manipulating the pedals cleanly within this space. You know, I forgot how much I like the GT pedal position, but I think most would like it as it is the setup that we drive most cars and trucks with these days and even more familiar if your car has a stick shift in it. There's certainly a different feel when using pedals mounted in the GT position versus the standard floor mount position most sim racing pedals have these days. I will be keeping my impetus pedals in this configuration. Just feels a bit more natural to me. Of course, pedal feel is a very subjective thing, and I'm sure there are others who would disagree. <laughs> I'm Barry Rowland. Thanks again for watching the Sim Racing Garage channel. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And if you would like to help support what I do here at the SRG, visit my website at simracinggarage.com.